time for AgriTalk, a discussion of issues and events important to rural America. Here's Mike Adams. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AgriTalk. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the 27th Annual International Fuel Ethanol Workshop and Expo. And we are broadcasting from the Eisenman booth, Clean Air and Energy Technology. And we're very happy to uh, be on board with them again this year here at the Fuel Ethanol Workshop. A lot going on here, certainly ethanol is seemingly always in the news and whether it be uh, positively or negatively i mean if we're either we're constantly trying to talk about the positives course but there are always those that uh, shoot down the industry and we're kind of in one of those cycles now where it's in vogue to go after ethanol again so plenty to talk about here but there are a lot of positive developments too that we want to address and we will be on our program uh, today including later we'll be talking with the managing director for nascar green innovation nascar obviously uh, on board with ethanol as they've made this switch to E15, so a lot to talk about there. We're going to start off, though, with Robert White, Director of Market Development for the Renewable Fuels Association. Robert, good to see you again, and these are interesting times once again with ethanol. There's never a boring time, certainly. Plenty of challenges, plenty of issues, but there are some things happening we need to keep an eye on. Where are we in the whole E15 process? Anything new or as we wait for more approval on that? Well, we were hoping that by the time this conversation happened today that we'd have a a label uh, from EPA. We know it's gone through Uh, the White House and has been blessed. We're hoping it, the skull and crossbones has been removed and is a relatively pleasing to the eye uh, label, but we don't know. And that's going to be the the first hurdle that we have to get that label out, uh, see where we stand on that, and hopefully we don't have to submit some sort of an appeal or you know, hopefully not even a lawsuit, but you know that things happen. Uh, we have to protect the industry, uh, but we have health effects testing going on. We have octane certification that we have to do. Uh, we're hopeful by the end of this year that you will start to see E15 available. Uh, but it's uh, not only the federal issues that we have to overcome, but we also have state issues that have limitations at the, on E10. Uh, and of course, we have equipment issues. It's it's not an easy turnkey process, but we are making strides, and we're hopeful. Like I said, by the end of the year. At least in some states, uh, E15 will be available. Bring us up to date on the progress of getting more blender pumps out into the country. Well, same situation. Some states, you know, are uh, have archaic regulations out there in the mid-level blends or uh, until they have a, their own fuel specification, which we're also working on. It's hard to just introduce them because the states feel that even though you're uh, com- using two products that have a fuel specification to make these mid-level blends, they're not ready for that. So blender pumps, uh, while we have about 325 offering mid-level blends somewhere in the country, we have another 11 or 1,200 out there that are just offering E85 that someday will be ready when the mid-level blend uh, opportunity uh, presents itself and they're ready for it. Um, but we're working with the Blend Your Own Ethanol campaign. It's a combination with American Corn Gro- or America, excuse me, American Coalition for Ethanol and all of the state corn grower groups. And what we're uh, we've seen great strides there because people are looking at how they can offer E15 the most inexpensive way, and also how they can differentiate themselves from the perhaps a big box across the street. For folks with an iPhone, they can download an app that you have, which will show them where they can find blender pumps. Yeah, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for consumers to find uh, blender pumps in E85. We have an iPhone app, an Android app. Uh, You can uh, go to chooseethanol.com and and look for the download instructions for both of those. We even have points of interest downloads for TomTom and Garmin. So we're we're trying to eliminate every barrier there is for folks to actually find the E85 stations. And one of the more uh, interesting places we found a home for that is with federal fleets because they claim, well, we don't know where the stations are at. We we can't find the fuel. Uh, We we want that to be a a statement of the past, and we're trying to uh, use those mobile applications to eliminate federal fuel waivers. You know, the, what's happened here recently, the, the release of uh, 30 million barrels of oil from the petroleum reserve, you know, it just points out, if we just use more ethanol, we wouldn't need to tap into reserves or, uh, you know, uh, because we have this fuel available right now, we have a surplus, we're actually exporting ethanol, that's fuel we could be using right now. It is a little troubling when we see a strategic reserve. I mean, obviously, strategic petroleum reserve, but strategic in reserve uh, having to be released when the ethanol industry is not operating at full capacity or exporting because we don't have uh, enough demand or uh, the regulatory opportunities uh, to offer more ethanol. Uh, that we have to go to those strides. I mean, I, uh, you know, as a veteran, as you know, it it, it troubles me that we're tapping into uh, such a thing that's there for emergencies and. 
high fuel prices is is not an emergency and i hope that it doesn't come back to haunt us but it, it like i said it is troubling that we have to tap into that when we have available renewable resources that could allow that strategic reserve to stay in place until we truly need it yeah, that's for an emergency supply situation that's not the case here. no this this is high fuel prices uh, i I, like everyone else, understand that high fuel prices in, in the time in the state of our national economy is troubling. Uh, but at the same time, it, it's also uh, supply and demand. It's what helps uh, re-educate consumers on fuel economy standards, making sure their tires are inflated, choosing a, a renewable fuel. All of these come together to help us combat those higher prices. And all we're doing is putting a Band-Aid on a, on a growing problem. Good to see you again. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Robert White, Director of Market Development for the Renewable Fuels Association here at the International Fuel Ethanol Workshop and Expo in Indianapolis. All right, our poll question this week at agritalk.com. We're asking you, what do you think of these new FDA cigarette package labels? Do you think they're too graphic? Or do you think they're a good idea? Or do you think they really won't make a difference when it comes to whether or not people smoke? Log on and vote at agritalk.com, and we'll have the results for you coming up on Friday's program. All right, much more to come from the Fuel Ethanol Workshop. And again, our broadcast made possible by the folks at Eisenman, Clean Air and Energy Technology, Anaerobic Digestion for Ethanol. We'll be talking about some of their technology, how it's being used a little bit later on in the program. But coming up next, Tom Bias, CEO of Growth Energy. A lot to talk about the challenges and the issues facing the ethanol industry and some of the great promotional work going on with NASCAR. All that coming up. Stay with us. This is Agritalk. 